<clears throat> it's day one of the build. What does that mean? Um, today we're gonna be disassembling essentially the entire bike to what we need to so we can send some stuff off for powder coating and we can kind of start looking at the frame and stuff that we need to do because we need to chop the frame. We might even start cutting it today so I can get some measurements in and figure out what type of steel tubing I need. We're going to be using DOM tubing which is what they always use for motorcycle frames. It's what I use for the Harley build and yeah so that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be disassembling the bike, getting things broken down so we can go get it off to uh, get painted or powder coated. We're going to make a list of things that we need to order and or make and then we're going to start designing the rear suspension today hopefully too. I might even chop it, maybe, we'll see. But step number one is to get the bike on my new lift build jack thing and get it disassembled. That's so awesome! Before I go any farther, I am, I'm making really good progress, especially the amount of time. Um, <clears throat> I want to see how wide this tube is so I know if I need to buy another die or not. Um, because so far I've been using one and a quarter inch tubing, I believe. And I believe this looks a little bigger. This, let's see. Let's see how wide this is. All right, this is 1.35 inches or if you're from a different country, 34 millimeters. And then this is the tube I have a die for, for the tube bender. I believe this is an inch and a quarter. Yeah, 31 millimeters, 32 millimeters. That should be about, uh, yeah. Yep, inch and a quarter. So uh, I either need to get a new die or I might just have to use smaller tubing. I'll see if there's a die available. And, and is this, 
the same diameter as the, it's the same size. So that, that's good that these are the same diameter, which means I don't have to do any sort of weird stepping. Either uh, step down the connecting tube. I'm assuming that's actually pretty thin wall steel. I bet that it's nowhere near the, uh, the thickness as the DOM tubing that I've been using. So I might still be able to get away with using that tube if I can, if they're the same inner diameter, which they might be, we'll see. Or that tube might fit directly inside of that and then we could, uh, I don't know. That, that might be what we use as our uh, plug welding material. Right now we have the rear section almost completely broken down. I'm not gonna remove the rear wheel just yet. So essentially what I'm gonna have to do is pull out this rear shock and um, then insert, does it connect? Oh, it connects here. We can start pulling off all the small stuff like the ignition and whatnot and disconnect the battery, which uh, is right there. What I'll do is I'll yank this out, measure what I want the suspension lengthwise, because what I'd like to do is I'd like to get it low enough where the levelness of this is the same levelness as this. So this needs to come up a good bit so it would be flush. So I'm just trying to get some <clears throat> idea of how low this thing is going to be. That's pretty damn low. Um, and it's probably not even as low as it's going to be. Um, just because I'm looking at the, the way the frame is designed, you notice we still have... <clears throat> they're not aligned. Um, I'm going to chop it here and then here. I think I need to go ahead and chop this section of the frame off so we can get an idea. We'll go ahead and start cutting. Let's see, it looks like it's connected via here. So if we just chop it right there, chop that whole subframe off on both sides, we might be able to get a better idea, but that's pretty low to the point where I can't get that underneath it. I have to figure out some sort of weird way to jack that thing back up again, but that's to give you guys an idea of what it's gonna be like as far as like low-wise. That's gonna look good. It's gonna look real good. I think I'm gonna roll with some clip-on style handlebars that clip around the forks down here. Or I might just bring these up and then clip them around the top of the trip. So we will see. That's gonna look so fucking cool. But time to put it back on the jack, chop some shit, and then let's try this again.
so getting an idea of how low this bike is gonna sit I'd say it'll be close to about here um, yeah it's pretty low and none of this stuff is permanent right here I just have these laying around pulled these off the, uh, the little Harley just to kind of see uh, how they're gonna sit obviously this will be a Springer seat so it'd be more elevated like that um, might not even use that seat I don't know we'll see and I probably won't even use that rear fender because it's a little it's a little narrow for these tires and I'll have to throw on some uh, some white walls obviously but yeah the answer is it's gonna sit pretty low it'll probably be close to this now originally and I went ahead and chopped the subframe like you guys saw um, originally what I was gonna do is gonna chop the frame somewhere around here the uh, the rear suspension here whatever you want to call the swing arm cut this here and then connect it somewhere out here but these aren't on the same plane and I'm not sure if I wanted to go much lower than that so um, I see a lot of I see at least some people chop it from around here and then that'll give me the the room I need to if I need to put a secondary bend in here to like kind of elevate it and then bend in um, or it might just give me the wiggle room that I need to, to do one consecutive bend to get it from here to there. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I'm not sure if I'm in the mood to full-blown chop it right now. What I need is I need to run by the steel place. It's on my way home anyway. Pick up some square stock that'll go in between here and in there as well to create a temporary rigid suspension so I don't have to worry about the frame flexing or bending um, when I'm getting ready to weld everything up and I can get everything 100% exactly how I need it. I'm also going to be chopping here and eliminating all of this obviously and then this will weld directly into the uh, the hardtail for extra support. I, I am at a good stopping point but I'd like to break the bike down even further. I also gonna get rid of these bars. I'm probably gonna go with some clip-ons. I've checked it. They will clear the tank, hopefully. Uh, if the clip-ons don't work, I'll go with some like Z-bars. Camouflage green is the winner so far on the poles. So that's what we're going with. I know a lot of you guys want to see the red, and I think I will do that as my next project. I think I'll get another one like this and then do the exact same thing except with the red. Because at this point, like things are going uncomfortably smooth. This will be green. That will be green. The rear fender, whenever I get it, will be green. The wheels will be black. The frame will be black. And um, whatever sort of battery electronic box I cook up will also be camouflage green. I actually might be able to get away with using a small ammo tin can. That would be the, uh, that'd be the dream. All right, so I just ordered the uh, 170, 80, 15, and a um, 190, 19 Shinko white wall and that'll be here next week. I'm going to use my micrometer to measure the diameter of the forks for market clip-ons, especially for Japanese bikes come in millimeters. So the 40 millimeter forks, is that what they are? 39 millimeter. So that's 39. So what I've done is I've removed the front fender and the gas tank. These will both be uh, powder coated, uh, the matte green. I'm not gonna take the wheels off just yet. I'm gonna get the hardtail done first uh, before I take the front wheel and forks off. I will rebuild the forks, take the forks out. I will have these powder coated black, the wheels powder coated black. The uh, bottom and top of the triple tree clamps, those will be powder coated black. So I'll have to pop these little bad boys out. And then um, I also completely disassembled the uh, forward controls, electronics and all. So I'm about to go drop these off. These are all gonna be powder coated black, um, gloss black. The wheels will be gloss black as well. Just over time, you know, like the headlight assembly gets rusted because uh, this isn't coated. This is just stainless steel, well, not stainless steel, but this, uh, you know, steel. And then your headlight assembly, this is all rusty and whatnot, so that'll be powder coated. And all, all the hand controls. These, this, is, this is such a common problem, at least with Hondas. Um, over time, the oxidization just covers these a little aluminum things, 
and they just don't look good over time. You could polish these back up, but I want them to be black. So I've disassembled, taken all the electronics out, and uh, I think that is a good stopping point for the disassembly. All right, before we wrap this episode up, we're gonna look at a parts list of things that we need. Tires, white wall tires, obviously. Tubing, obviously for the, the hardtail. Um, handlebars. Foot controls, definitely need some new foot controls. What else, what else do we need? Air filter, we definitely need, I wanna do like one of those cool open air filters, so we'll do an air filter. Be a new seat, anything that we need to do, maybe I'll put in parentheses. Cause I'm not sure if I wanna use the, the seat that I already have here. We'll see how it looks when it's all put together. If I don't like it, then I won't use it. Maybe a new fuel tank. So I like the OEM tank, it's perfectly sized and I don't wanna to go to a peanut tank, at least not just yet. I'm gonna see how it looks after it's been powder coated. If it looks cool, I'm gonna roll with it. If not, we'll we'll use like a custom peanut tank and uh, we'll make it, you know, like a Frisco style. But for right now, I prefer to use the OEM tank. Ah, uh, yes, a uh, speedometer. The reason being is that the the current like speedometer, at least the housing for it, is dented up and dinged up from I guess the previous owners uh, dropping it or whatever. So I'm gonna take that off, put a new housing on it, blacken it, and it's gonna be yeah. Needs a new exhaust. And I think I might try to make one, we'll see. If I try to, I'll need a new die for the exhaust pipe to bend it and stuff like that. Or maybe I can find one of those weld up kits where you just kind of like cut and weld it exactly how you need it to be. Rear fender, we need a new rear fender. And some new grips. I think that covers it, at least for the most part. This is what we need. I'll get to ordering this tonight and hopefully we can have it, at least some of it here by the next time so we can start kind of assembling stuff and see how it looks. And these are all the OEM parts that we've stripped off today. Um, these will actually be for sale, uh, at least most of it will be for sale at the Burnt Rubber website. I don't know when, and as soon as I do, I'll let you guys know. All right, guys, thank you for joining me for another episode of the Build Series. Things are getting underway really good. Uh, things are moving right along. I'm very happy with the progress I've made in just one day and one afternoon for pro probably three or four hours altogether. Um, I'm gonna go drop the stuff off to get powder coated. I'll see you guys next week, hopefully with another update. Maybe we'll get some more stuff done. We'll see how this thing goes. I might be able to turn out a couple of these things a year and uh, sell them to you guys or maybe give them away. I don't know, we'll, we'll figure it out. I'm just having fun building stuff, man. I, I miss this so much. It feels good to be building stuff again. So yeah, I'm gonna get cleaned up and I will see you guys later.